Hi, I'm Linda Collins, and I'm here on the Keith Andrews Network. And I'd just like to say that I think uh, Keith's show um, is a really good show. I love the work he's doing. I support his uh, platform to promote anyone with a disability to just go out and do, do what you do. Um, I was very uh, actually pleasantly surprised with my interview with Keith because he is very articulate. He listens. He's very well spoken, very polite, um, very charming. And uh, I would say to whoever's out there, if you get a chance to be interviewed by Keith, just jump right on it. It was a great experience for me. Welcome to the Keith Andrew Network. That's right, I am the one and only Keith Andrew, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Did I mention you're watching the Keith Andrew Network? <laughs> anyway, don't mind me, I'm really rusty at this. But I am your host, Keith Andrew, along here is the talented and beautiful Linda Collins. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thanks for asking me. It's great to be here. No, the honor's all mine. And for people who want to know what my talk show's about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And it's to prove to them you can still amount to something. No, hashtag break the labels. Now, people are wondering, no, Keith, it's January. Why do you want to do a Christmas theme? <laughs> the reason for that is I was working at my job. I won't say the name. I was working at my job every single day for the holidays. Plus, I didn't really have a lot of guests to do the holiday theme. So I said, screw it. It's a new year. Why not continue the theme from last year? Start off a new year in a new way. So all of January, because I said I was going to do a theme for January, might as well continue the Christmas theme, holiday theme. So every single episode of the Keith Angie Network, when we interview our guests, they get to dress up, I get to dress up as a holiday theme. And that will be the whole month of February. I mean January. February it might be something, but we will cross our bridge when we get to it. But... With that being said, it's a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And now I'm going to ask you some easy questions, some hard-hitting ones. It's uncensored, freedom of speech, self-expressing. You puss on me, I'm going to puss back. But it's still a family-oriented show, so we're going to have fun with it. So the first question I was going to ask you before I get to the list is, how was life growing up, and were you a study nerd or party animal? Where I grew up? Yes. Where I grew up? Um, well, uh, kind of halfway in St. Louis, Missouri. That's where I was born. And then um, my folks moved us down to the deep south into Alabama, which is where they both came from. And then I moved, essentially moved up north and lived in Canada and all over the place for many years and uh, landed in New York somehow. And, um, and here I am. In New York City, so what? What was the second? And there was the second part to the question. Yes, when you were in uh, college, uh, were oh. you a study nerd or a party animal? Oh right, no, a study animal, one hundred percent, one hundred percent a study animal. Matter of fact, my um, yeah, in uh, in grade school, I was always the teacher's pet. Okay, that's like kind of sickening to a lot of people, but that's the way it was. And uh, then, you know, um, honor, you know, honor roll. I was just like a real study nerd. But then, you know, actually, though, now that I think about it, when I got in uh, high school, I was not as motivated in the academics because, <clears throat> excuse me, I was much more motivated in music and, and acting, which is what I still do. 
And um, so I remember my chemistry teacher said at one point, you know, if you really, <laughs> if you really wanted to, and you would quit spending all your time, you know, doing artistic things, you would be just fine at chemistry. So it wasn't really a party animal, but I, I wasn't quite as studious. But then when I went to university, I went back to studious because I was studying the things I wanted to, to do, which is the arts. So I was studying, you know, music and, and so on. So I guess it's a little bit of both, but, but mostly, mostly studious, mm -hmm. I have to say. Never been really a party animal. I never went to college, but I do have a mixture of the both. You know, I am spontaneous. A lot of people say I'm artistic, but maybe that's why I'm a party animal. But who knows? Uh, I do have a fun side. I do have a serious side. Um, you know, whatever. Um, to reach your own. But it's what you're saying. You're doing all these great things. And that goes to the theme of the show. Do what you love and show them that you're passionate about doing it. But labels mm -hmm. don't dictate saying, oh, well... You know, you're a woman, but you're doing all these things because this is not the 1920s. You know, this is not the 30s where the stereotypical woman stays in the home. Thank God we don't do that anymore. Yes, thank but, God it's right. But I'm showing you, you know, if you can do it, and I'm labeled handicapped, mentally disturbed, retarded, you're an inspiration for me, and you're an inspiration for everyone else to show you that whatever people want to put labels on you. It doesn't have to define who you are and how you're going to live your life. Definitely. Yeah, do it. Definitely do what you love to do because um, uh, there was there was a there was a time in, you know, as a as a young woman where I thought uh, I should probably go into some a science field or so because, you know, that was the uh, the one academic that I really liked was science and math. And so I, I even went to the science building at the university I was attending and, and was getting ready to, to sign up for a science major, like um, I think it was microbiology or something like that. And then I headed back over to the um, School of uh, Music and, and Theater and realized on the way over there I would be bored out of my mind doing anything other than the things I love to do like as uh, from the time I was four and so now I'm still doing what I love to do and I, I cannot imagine uh, any other life any other life that I would want to be living for me you know each to his own I mean, there's plenty of people I'm sure that are not bored with um, the academics uh, like microbiology or um, law or you know whatever it might be but um, no there's there's just different you know like you said different strokes for different folks and uh, you know so I'm doing what I love and and people will say to me, oh, I can see you're so passionate about that and you have so much passion and you have so much drive. And, and yeah, so it does show. When you love what you do, it completely shows and it supersedes anything else that might be out there is, is your drive and, and your love for it. And, you know, and you're an, you yourself are an example of that. You know, here you are doing your thing, you know, reaching out to to. Who, whoever, I mean, I'm sure you've reached out to a lot of people for interviews over the last several years since you've been doing your show. And so it's a privilege for me to be speaking with you, really. Oh, I appreciate it. And there's two things I do want to mention. One, you know, for older wrestlers who are watching this, you know, I'm a big fan of Angelina Love, Gail Kim, all those beautiful women. And some of the guys, too. You know, I'm not into guys, so thank God for that. I have enough issues in my life. <laughs> but, but all the guy wrestlers that I want on the show, I'm not showing you, you know, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, you mentioned you, you're you an artist, you work in theater, you work in film, you're an actress, you're an inspirational speaker. And you all these great things, but I'm not just, it's not going to be just like an oxymoron, like, oh, tell me about your acting career. 
No, who influenced you? What, what actors did you like? What <laughs> actors did you sleep with? What actors did drugs? What actors actually do like drugs? You know, it's not... Because I watch interviews, and I watch all those wrestling interviews, and they're so stupid. Uh, you know, I saw you did a wrestling match, and it, it, give me an example. My brother went to a autograph signing, and uh, Jerry King Walter was there. And the guy's like, so, uh, you know the time you had a heart attack on TV? Um, what was it like? It's like, <laughs> you know, you there to say, hey, it's very nice to meet you. Ask a question. You don't provoke. You don't walk up to a beehive and you, you know, poke your freaking finger at it. It's like, well, I didn't know there were bees in there, so I wanted to see what would happen. So... Yeah. These uh, these uh, stars I want to have on the show think I'm going to ask, you know, who did you sweep around with? Did he do drugs? You know, okay, I, I would have fun with it, but I want to ask idiotic questions like that. It's mm -hmm. like you. You're on the show. You're making a new friend out of it. And you're supporting a good cause. So it's whatever. Uh, give me an example. Um, a while ago, I came up with this idea it's still a great idea i want to do it i want to have kids on my show people yeah. are like you know you have actors you have actresses why don't you interview kid actors uh -huh. and the reason i try to when i work in my job i won't say where i am but i like to befriend you know kids because that's therapy for myself because i don't know how to act around kids i give you an example my niece would come over with my brother and my other brother just has a newborn. And I'm like, oh, hi, you know, that's it. I don't have, I don't know how to interact. So if I can interact with somebody else's kids, that's therapy for myself to say, now I can interact with my niece a little bit better. I can be a little more of a human being, if that makes any sense. So I um, came across this actress and I said to her, you know, I would love to have you on the show. And it said, if you're interested, your kids are more than welcome to join you because the show's for everyone. Right. And you're making a good friend and you're supporting a good cause. And she basically hit the frickin' roof saying, how dare you ask me to interview my kids? How dare you want to have my kids on your show? Yeah. And so... I don't know, dude, I just, just one thing was annoying me, but it's like I said, you know, you're making a new friend, you're supporting a good cause, but it isn't about me, but it's the same thing with the wrestlers. It's like, yes, I am a wrestling fan, but it isn't going to be a wink, wink wrestling shoot. It's not going to be whatever you're expecting in it, because I did. I did. I did interview a whole bunch of wrestlers, and they said it was a lot of fun. They enjoyed it. It wasn't what they were expecting. So, pretty much, I'm saying, well, long story short, then we can go to the next subject. Is give I <laughs> like the hashtag I have, hashtag give Keith Angie Network a chance. And what I asked, and I said this to Gail, you know, I would love to have you. My brother was with me. Um, I said to Gail. Uh, I would love to have you on the show. Oh, I don't do wrestling interviews. I never said this was a wrestling interview. I said I want to have you as a guest on the show. And mm -hmm. I said to you, to her, I promise you it's not what you are expecting. And putting that question back to you is when then I invited you, what were some of your expectations of me before we did the interview, and now as we're doing the interview, what are some of your expectations of the interview? How are you are you enjoying yourself? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's fun, it's fun bantering, talking, listening to you, and and finding out about you, and uh, telling you a little bit about me. So uh, you know, Skype is always fun. You know, it's kind of like being uh, it's it's almost like being on a set. <laughs> which is always great fun. Um, I didn't really know what to expect because um, I, I, I think you and I are friends on Instagram. And um, 
you know, so I've seen some of your posts there. So I know you have the network, uh, you know, the Keith Andrews network. I wasn't really sure exactly if your focus was on actors or, you know, just people in the arts in general. I really didn't know. But, you know, I thought, well, you know, yeah, sure. Let's 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 do this. What you know, why not? Sounds like fun to me. So I didn't have a real tangible expectation other than it'll be interesting to see what kind of questions, you know, Keith comes up with and, you know, be a little little bit of fun in the new year. Well, we, we tried to we tried to get in December, but that just didn't work out time wise and everything. But then um, we're still in the Christmas theme and I'm wearing my blue green Christmas red, you know, still a little bit Christmassy thing red see green yeah so so i tried i tried to keep up a little bit with the um i i have to admit i don't have any christmas sweaters okay so there's no christmas sweaters in the closet but uh but i tried to do a little bit of uh you know well, christmas. people say i'm coming out of the closet <laughs> <laughs> like i said I, I as long as i get to make the guests laugh that's all that matters you know i yes i People do poke fun at me. I might as well poke fun at myself because it, eh, what the hell? You only live once. But like you said, you know, you gave me a chance and I'm very thankful for you for that. And that's what I want from every single person. You know, just give me your chance. I prom and I promised you, you're going to have a good time. And it looks like you're enjoying yourself. So I am keeping my word. Now, this is, isn't about me because people have been hearing that for in the past five, five and a half years. So let's focus on the main subjects I do want to talk to you about. One thing that really caught my interest, and by the way, when I ask you these questions, I am going to throw in a little disability parts to there. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, Art, what got you interested in working in the... Now, I saw you art, so I don't know if you mean like yeah, you actually draw, or is that art as in the fielder? Um, our art is in all of the the arts field, so that you know, encompassing um, uh, encompassing music, theater, painting, um, uh, dance, movement. You know, any any of the arts. You know, for me, my my fields are. Music and and drama; those are my fields. Uh, but you know, for someone else. So when I say was interested in the arts, the particular the particular arts that that drew me in were music and um, and the dramatic arts, the acting. You know, being being an actress. But then you know, since I've started doing that, then of course other aspects of of acting become interesting, like some of the behind the scenes. Although I really prefer being in front of the camera. Um, and then music has just, you know, always been a, uh, you know, that's, I, I've, since, since I was, you know, right out of college, I was making my living as a musician, you know, and then the acting portion came along, uh, as far as professionally in about the last 10 years. So those are my, my artistic interests are, you know, those two things, but, you know, that being said, uh, I love all of the arts. Like I've, I've played music for dance companies. Um, I, you know, I certainly love the whole, um, you know, any of the, mu any of the musical arts, any of the dramatic arts, uh, I just love when it comes to things like painting, I cannot paint or draw at all so i know what i uh, and that's okay with me it's just not where my gifts are um i'm always amazed at someone like um anthony hopkins who also you know he's a painter uh, he's like a really good painter as well as a you know fantastic actor but you know everyone has their own things so minor music and, and acting and um someone who's like one of my idols Anthony Hopkins, uh, I imagine he could do just about anything he wanted to do, but, you know, I really admire him. But, yeah, he's a great, he's also a great art, a visual artist. So he's a visual artist as well as a dramatic actor. Yeah. So, and I guess I got interested in, in, in the arts at a very young age because my mom was a piano player and a singer. 
So uh, my dad was not at all, and um, but I took after my mom that way. And so, you know, I would hear music and singing coming out of the parlor at home, you know, from the time I was just a, a probably before I was even born. So it was like almost, there was no choice, you know. It, it wasn't even, I mean, I had free will, but... It's like I said, the, the, the one real tangible time, because there were things I, you know, I thought I wanted to do along the way. For a minute, I wanted to, like, do, hair, do people's hair, be a, like a hairdresser. For a minute, I, I wanted to work in a zoo. Well, more, more than a minute. I, I kind of really wanted to work in a zoo because I love animals. Um, and then, you know, there, there's other things along the way you think you want to be. I wanted to be a scientist because my mom was a medical technologist. Um, uh, but, but, you know, at the end of the day, the only thing that compelled me enough to actually do it, you know, were these artistic things. So you just go with it. And, you know, you, you never work a day in your life when you do what you love, you know. No, absolutely. So, and it's, you mentioned animals. I'm going to tell you a quick funny story. But I do like your necklace. Is that, like, is that your true blood serum? That is, um, this necklace came from, I think, New Mexico, and uh, I, I'm not even sure what the name of the stone is. It's, uh, yeah, it's some kind of a, a beautiful stone, but uh, it's kind of a, a, a new thing, and I was really trying to be Christmassy, you know? So I wore <laughs> yeah, my it looks nice, honey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know, that was a bad joke. <laughs> And you're talking about animals. At my son's store, we actually sell fish. Yeah. And so I felt bad because I'm always staring at them. I've been there since August. And these things are always going around. And it's like, do anyone really feed these damn things? So I decided yesterday, huh, I want to feed the fish. I made up my mind. I want to feed the fish. And yeah. I was like... All right, whatever. Whatever makes you happy, whatever. Don't overfeed them. Don't kill them. Yeah, right, right. So, you know, we have something called uh, Oscar, Oscar Fisk. Okay. Those freaking bastards. It, because they jump at you. So, oh, really? When you, so, when you put your hand in, like, normally, you drop yeah. the food in like that. And, okay, whatever. Normal fish. These little buggers, who, because they don't feed them. They don't feed them regularly because they real... I guess they're aggressive, I guess. I heard of it, they were always mean, but they really will jump out of the water and try to nip your fingers for the food. Wow. How, how big are they? What and size? It's, it's like, it's like, like that. So I decided to throw the food in like that. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And I, I guess it didn't like it, so I jumped up and splashed on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell is you, man? <laughs> I feed in the catfish. Exactly. Well, I have two poodles right here somewhere in the. Uh, if I can get one to come over here, Nola Bell, come here, Nola. Maybe so, I can. You want to see my? You want to see one of my poodles? Sure. Want, uh, hey, anything can happen live. Okay. Come here. Okay. Here. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. This is Solomon, and he's wearing a Christmas bow. Yes. He looks so yeah. handsome. He's a very handsome poodle. Yeah, he's my little oh, toy. Oh, Mr. Solomon, Solomon yeah. the Great. Yeah, he's a real sweetie pie. So this is, he's a toy poodle, and then I have one more toy poodle if I can get her up. Come here, Nola. This is Nola Bell. <laughs> so cute. Uh, she's she's wearing a, um, <laughs> a a little Christmas bow as well. We haven't taken out our Christmas bows, so these are my little. Yeah, they're so sweet. These are my babies. Yeah, and I also have a uh, an older, uh, excuse me, a seventeen year old, well, sixteen and a half year old um, Shih Tzu, but he sleeps almost all the time. So Molly, when, I can... when you're an old man, you you have to sleep, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like that um, little tag I have. I, I I like to decorate my vest at work. Yeah, and I found a pen that says, "I like to party." And by parties, I mean by take naps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the type of party. Sometimes people take a nap after a party for sure. Yeah, like a, a self-imposed, uh, I can't do anything but nap, nap. <laughs>
in my everyone I like, and in Perry, everyone else does. It's just anxious at birth. Is what? Anxious at birth? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But the, the last thing I do want to talk to you, then we could take a quick, quick on a commercial break, is acting. Now, it's very interested in becoming an actor, so I do have acting classes for you. Oh, One, okay. have you ever worked with anyone with disabilities? And two, are you willing to work with anyone with disabilities? I, I have actually. Uh, I, I don't know what all might might be categorized as a disability, but I did a film um, last year with uh, a uh, filmmaker from. Um, I'm trying to think, of, I think it was. Uh, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong and offend somebody, but I think it's pronounced fairly Dick Dickerson Dickinson Dick. Uh, you know, I'm not from New Jersey. It's a it's a big college here, out in, uh, by Morristown or in that that area. I think it's fairly Dickerson. I think that's I think I'm saying it correctly. And if I'm not, I apologize to everybody that went there. But it's something like that. <laughs> but um, this uh, young man had, um, um, I believe it was cerebral palsy. I believe that's what he had, and. Um, so he had, you know, significant issues and he uh, issues as far as, you know, uh, mobility and, and, and speech and things like that. And his, I'm not speaking out of turn. His, his film was about that. His film was about getting through his disabilities, going on or whatever he calls them, his, um, the things that made something's difficult for him. I don't know if they're classified disabilities and I don't want to class anybody as having a disability if they themselves are not, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to label anybody, but he did have this thing. And, um, he was such a sweet, smart guy, um, and created this, uh, film, you know, which was about, which I got to play his mother in the film and it was about uh, his, you know, his struggle getting from being at home and then making the decision to go away to college, um, you know, away from his parents, uh, away from his whole support mechanism. And uh, I actually just saw the film. I'm glad you reminded me of it because it, the film was just finished just a couple months ago and, and he sent it to me and it's a beautiful film. The, the young man that he got to play himself, because uh, he didn't play himself, he, he wrote and directed the film. The, the, and, and understand, I just said that this guy wrote and directed the film. That's huge, you know. Um, but the man, the, the, uh, the young guy that he got to play him did a lot of work on the role because it would take a lot of work to mimic his symptoms, you know, uh, the manifestation of, um, of that condition. And of course he did a fabulous job, but I, I told him he really should submit this film to, to festivals because it's a real story. It's a story about not only uh, working through, um, whatever the hurdles are in your life, you know, physical, mental, emotional, whatever, whatever they are. Um, but, uh, other things as well, like other issues that you may have just as a human being and how you, uh, interact with life, how life, um, how, you know, the feelings you have about other people, there were, there were really a lot of, things that were brought up in this film as far as the human condition way beyond any of that and it's a, a really worth worthwhile film i can't can't remember what he titled the film but hopefully it will be on the um circuit so yes i have worked with with people with disability and i very much enjoyed it and as a matter of fact when i was leaving the shoot um he came this writer director came out to my car because I just had to scoot really fast because I had a rehearsal I had to get to. And he, he flagged me down, you know, from where we were shooting, flagged me down and um, just, you know, 
thanked me for being on set and coming out. It was just a lovely person. And I would, in a heartbeat, be willing to work with, you know, someone, anyone with a disability. Of course. Of course. No, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you my last question, and I'm going to pass the show over to you. <laughs> okay. Vanessa Lina. I'm Adrian Monroe. Hi, I'm Cynthia Babs today. I'm Sonia Fisher. This is Shane Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. This is Amelia Clover. Hi. I'm Amy Lyndon. Hi, 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 I'm Amy Lyndon.
you know, I have one. It doesn't mean you have to because you absolutely don't have to. You just have to be have that uh, quality of being able to um, express your, your feelings and, ex, you know, express the action um, on camera or on stage in a, in a way that is, you know, emotionally believable. You have to you have to feel you have to be able to show your your feelings and the feelings have to be real so that being said um although you might not be able to read a a script the way you would want to read a script if someone were were helping you read the script and you had and you obviously have a lot of emotions that have come out in in our show today um you know you yeah sure you know you've got the, the 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 biggest thing is do you you know do you have those emotions do you have that 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 thing that can reach and touch other people because that's that's really what it's about no matter what the field is when it, when it comes to to the arts is does does that piece of art does that glorious piece of art touch you does that beautiful film speak to you does that theater presentation just make you leave the theater with uh, a, a different understanding of life and so none of those things involve can you read the way maybe you might want to? So, so yeah, I think you should always pursue your dreams, Keith. And I think like doing the show, like interviewing, like that's a great, um, I mean, that's a great thing that you've created. I mean, you know, you, you've done that. So yay you. No, you said uh, I saw emotion. Do you think that's, the same emotions as you're talking about for acting, or is it just being emotional? Well, that's that's a very loaded question because um, you know we're all as actors, con- you know, constantly striving to better our craft and to um, you know, and I certainly am always working on trying to just be you know be a better actor, be you know be. Um, be a better actor. Be a more, you know, make make sure everything's believable. Be more believable. Be, be, be real. Be authentic. Create the character. You know, all the stuff you're you 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 do when you're an actor. Um, but uh, if at the core you don't have, you know, a a, a rainbow of feelings, then you don't really have anything to work with. And it seems like you have a rainbow of feelings. So I mean, you just take your rainbow and you know, find the right playground with your with your rainbow. You know, that's, that's how I see it. Oh, do you think I have what it takes? I mean, honest opinion. I uh, sure. I mean, <laughs> to, I I mean, I don't. You know, I don't really assess other people that often. You know, I, I just kind of like work on my craft. So I'm not, um, I think you have a rainbow of feelings. And then whatever you do with the, the rainbow, that's, you know, that's that's your journey. That's your journey is what you do with the, the rainbow. But if you're asking me, do I think that whatever your disability might be is going to stop you from doing that the answer is no I don't think that would stop you from doing that um no I mean there are uh, plenty of people out there with look every person on the planet has something you know like uh has something that could theoretically hold them back you know from it could be oh I'm I'm, I'm too skinny. I'm not skinny enough. I'm too short. I'm too tall. Um, I'm too fat. Oh, no, no, my voice doesn't sound right. Oh, I can't get rid of my accent. I, I mean, there is an array of things that anyone could say is, is holding them back. Or, oh, my gosh, I, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't even finish high school. What do I have? No, you, you just go with, with, you know, what you have and you find your spot. You find your spot with that. That's all. I think anybody can do what they set their mind to do. I truly believe that. I truly, truly believe that. A lot of people think that, um, you know, maybe um, certain things, you know, come easy to certain people because of the way they look or appear or 
or whatever. And you never know what struggle someone's had, you know, behind that. You know, like a uh, perfect example would be if, say, if, if you have a, a very handsome man or a beautiful woman, everybody thinks, oh, life is so easy for them because, you know, you know, he's so he's so handsome. She's so pretty. She, people have no idea what, what people go through. And um, everyone's got everyone's got something, you know, that holds them back. It's just up to you to just. Find your find your path, you know, which could be a little bit like that, you know. No, absolutely. Now, my last thing for you is to tell you a little story. What happened yesterday is uh, it's funny, but it isn't funny. I made a woman cry. Oh no! I okay. Didn't, it's you know like oh well you're laughing you saw you sound like an asshole. <laughs> it, it isn't that. It's pretty much because when I ring somebody up, I like to befriend everyone so I told her you know uh, I have a disability and I have my own talk show and she's like it's just buying her web and I say are you making faces at me and then she's like I going to have to tell you I have a son who has a disability like you but he's worse and he won't talk about it and I said I was going on and what I do the whole speech and she started to cry, and I said, um, and I was starting to look, so I, if anyone asks you why you're crying, just say you just saw your bill. <laughs> you, you know, you saw something, but she resonated with my message, and my message struck a powerful nerve with her that right. she just completely lost it. And she said, you're an inspiration. I think you're doing a terrific thing. You know, God bless you, this and that. And I... I met a lot of people in my life, and she's actually the first person who actually cried when she heard my message. Mm -hmm. Well, for her, it hit really close to home because of her personal situation. But, but yeah, I mean, you are inspirational. I, I mean, hope so. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I you know, I talked to my manager about coming on here and doing this interview, and and, um, you know, I explained, you know, I said, you know, this is, you know, Keith Andrews, Keith Andrews Network, and this is what he says about himself is that he, you know, wants to prove other people wrong, that you can do whatever you do. And, and, um, and we both agreed, yeah, go on that show, that support that show, support that. Because, yeah, I mean, like I said, I was in a movie, a uh, short film earlier this year where that was the theme, and it was a beautiful beautiful representation of just just going just keep going you know don't stop do your thing you know believe in yourself and just do it because you're uh it looks to me like you found a, a pretty good niche for yourself right there doing what you're doing no absolutely i do have a couple questions for you off the air but wrapping up our interview segment it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest and i'm looking forward to part two down the road I just want to say thank you. Thanks. Thanks to you, too. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful, um, blessed 2019 filled with everything you want.